Hello and welcome to this Price of Job tutorial. In this video we will explain how to use the Timba Ceiling Joist Calculator to BS5268 through an example. To get started we will go to the top navigation blue toolbar and open the Engineering tab. And then browse to the module toolbar where we can select from a variety of different engineering modules. And here we can open the Floor Joist category where we have options for either ground floor joists, intermediate floor joists, or ceiling joists. Any of these is fine as we'll have the option to change this within the module later, but for this example we'll select ceiling joists. However, we'll discuss ground floor joists and intermediate floor joists in another video. The module appears in the left sidebar within this folder titled Structure by Default. By clicking on the pencil icon, we can rename this module folder to something more project relevant, such as Extension. Next to the module itself, we can click on the three dots to open the module options menu. Here we can rename the module, duplicate the module, move the module to different folders, or delete the module. So let's rename this specific calculation that we're going to do, such as ceiling joist number one, and then save. And now we can start the timber design. At the top of the right hand pane, we can select whether we are designing a ground floor joist, an intermediate floor joist, or a ceiling joist. So here we can either confirm or change our choice when we initially selected the module from the toolbar. In this instance we'll continue with ceiling joist. For the design inputs, we start by entering the clear span. This should be in millimeters. By clicking in the field, we open the slider box where we can select a value using the slider. Or we can just input a value manually into the field. In this case 4000 millimeters or 4 meters. And then here we can enter the joist spacing. This is also in millimeters, and we have options for 300, 400, 450, or 600 millimeters, but usually we choose 400 millimeters center to center. And then under the strength grade, we can enter the timber strength, or timber grade as we call it. Usually we choose C16 or C24 for softwood. We'll select C24. We recommend using a bearing length of at least 100 millimeters. Sometimes longer bearing is required to satisfy the bearing stress check. Maximum deflection is recommended to be set at 0.003 multiplied by the clear span, or 14 millimeters. The calculator will use the minimum of these two values. Utilization limit is recommended to be set at 99%. We have a special video for the utilization limit explanation in our other videos. The service class for timber ceiling joists is usually set as class 2. There are three different service classes. Class 1 is when we have a heated and dry environment. Service class 2 is when we have a cold and dry environment. Service class 3 is when the timber is exposed to weather. So we'll leave this set as service class 2. Next we can take a look at the loading inputs. This is where we answer the question, what type of load are the ceiling joists going to support? For ceiling joists, this is usually a standard calculation. We use 0.9 kilonewtons as a concentrated imposed loading and 0.25 kN per square meter uniformly distributed imposed live loading. These are not applied together, so either the 0.9 kN concentrated loading will be applied, or the 0.25 kN per square meter uniformly distributed imposed loading will be applied. Now for the dead loading, we can use a value of 0.25 to 0.3 kN per square meter, or we can use the calculator to calculate the exact dead loading. We can easily call up the appropriate values using the templates in the drop down menu at the top of this stage. But in this case we'll just stay with the recommended template for loft floor slash ceiling. And Price Drop has calculated a dead loading of 0.25 kN per square meter. If we need to add any extra rows here we can do so by clicking the plus add row button. For example we might add a row here for plywood with a dead load of 0.12 kN per square meter. And this is added to our calculation. And then we can use the grab handles here on the right to reorder these rows however we wish. Also, Price of Job makes it even easier by allowing you to access a library of templates by clicking the template button. And then you can browse through the categories, including boarding, timber, insulation, finishes, roof coverings, masonry, concrete, and imposed loads, including furniture and snow loads. So let's take a look at the boarding category, and let's add some 18mm plywood. By clicking on that, it's automatically added to our loading inputs, and we can use the grab handles here to reorder our row. 
Now if we have any rows that are no longer needed, we can click on the bin icon here to the right to remove that row. And we can see the updated values are calculated automatically as we go. We can change these values manually or change the template. However, for this example, we'll just leave the settings as is. If we expect that we'll be using these same inputs again in the future, we may want to save this modified template as a new template. And we can do that by clicking the template drop down menu and then scrolling down to the bottom to our custom list, where we can then save this as a new template. And we can give our custom template a customized name. We'll call this one with plywood and save. And now in the future, we can go back to our templates drop down menu, scroll down to our custom list and see all of our saved templates. If we no longer need any of these saved templates, we can delete them by clicking on the bin icon here on the right and confirm the deletion. If we go back to our drop down menu and scroll down to our custom list, we can confirm that our deletion was successful. Back to the loading input section, we have a checkbox here for show load details. By deselecting the show load details box, the loading details are not indicated in the report. However, if we scroll down in our description to the loading details section and select the show load details, we can see a table is added that includes all of our loading details. If this is deselected, the loading details are not indicated. We'll leave this checkbox selected to show our load details. Next, we'll take a look at the section. There are basically two different options. Either we know the size of the timber ceiling joists from the beginning, or we can choose the auto search feature to calculate the optimal timber size for us. The first process in which we know the size of the timber ceiling joists is called timber ceiling joists check. The second process in which we don't know the size of the timber ceiling joists is called timber ceiling joists design. The auto search feature will help us to optimize the timber ceiling joists width and depth. If we unclick auto search, then we can choose the width and depth that we want. For this example, we'll select 50 millimeters width and 225 millimeters depth. Now, based on the rest of the inputs in the previous sections, if we click auto search only for the depth, then the calculator optimizes the depth for a given width, in this case, 50 millimeters. Conversely, if we select auto search only for the width, Based on the rest of the inputs of the previous sections, the calculator optimizes the width for a given depth. Next, let's take a look at the description of results here in the description pane. In this section, we can see the summary of results. In the following sections, we see the design data, the loading details, including the load details table, which we have selected to show with this checkbox. Also the factors, the section properties, and the structural checks in detail. Regarding the results summary, you can see that the long-term, medium-term, and short-term checks all have a status of pass. Also, we can see the utilization factors. It is worth mentioning for that this type of structural calculation, it is the deflection that usually governs the design. This can be seen in the utilization factor. Hence, when the timber ceiling joists are not spanning a short distance, we should always have a look at the deflection, which is the structural check that usually governs the design. Now that these ceiling joists are done, if you have to make the same calculations for other ceiling joists, instead of starting all over again from scratch, you can save a lot of time by simply clicking the three dots next to the module to open the options menu and select duplicate module. Then we can reopen the new options menu to rename this new module for our next set of ceiling joists. We'll call this ceiling joists number two and save. Now all we have to do is modify the values for the new ceiling joists. When you are ready, you can click on the Reports tab here at the top of the left sidebar, and you'll see the Structural Calculations page. If you export this as a PDF, you'll see that your logo will automatically be shown at the top of the preview, and you can customize this as needed. At the bottom of the report, there is a section for Notes, and these can be input by clicking the pencil icon. And this opens the Notes Editor. Here we can type or edit our notes manually, or select the Import Note button to open Price of Jobs template library of professionally written notes, which are arranged by category, including legal fees, services, finishes, substructure, structural members, and general. Once you locate your desired note within the categories, for example, we might select structural members, then you can click on the note to have it instantly added to the report. Then we can alter it within the text editor to suit our needs. For example, we might edit this one from steel beams to timber joists. We can also add new categories for our notes by clicking the plus add category button. Let's call this one new category. 
and save. And we can add new notes by clicking the plus add note button. Let's call this one new notes and save. And now our new notes can be conveniently added to the report by clicking on the new note. If we choose to delete these notes, we can do so by clicking on the pencil icon and delete and confirm. And same thing with the category, just open the options menu with the three dots and delete this category and confirm. And make any changes within the editor that we wish. Here under substructure is another good example where we can see that this is particularly handy for adding legal disclaimers. When we close the editor, we can see that our customized notes have been added to our report. You can also combine this with a cover page and cover letter, both of which you can customize to show either detailed or simple information. And for your cover letter, you can type whatever you want here, and then save it as a template by clicking the three dots here next to template. Here you can give your new template a name and save it for future reuse. And all of your templates will be stored here in this drop down menu. When you're done customizing, you can print the complete report or export it as a PDF or export it as a Word document or email it to your client directly from within Price a Job. And that's how to use the Timber Ceiling Joist Calculator to BS5268. Thank you for using Price a Job.